Well, praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you ready to praise the Lord? I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise him this morning. I come to lift him up. I come to glorify God. I come to magnify his name. Truly, God is worthy, and he is worthy to be praised. You ought to give him some praise right now. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Well, we're getting ready to worship and praise God, to usher in his presence. I want you to just forget about what you've gone, been through before you got here. Forget about what, who's around you. Just focus on God as you and God alone. Hallelujah. Well, are you ready? Ready, 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 ready? Yeah. Come on, it's praise and worship time. Hallelujah. Woo-hoo. Glory to God. Put your hands together. We're going to take it old school real quick.
well, praise the Lord. Oh, let's get into the presence of the Lord this morning. We want to give God our whole heart as we worship Him this morning. It's all about our worship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get in that presence today. Glory to God. For in His presence is fullness of joy. Glory to God. In His presence is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Pleasures forevermore. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Thank you, God. Come on, we want to see the glory in this place. Come on, come on. Let's worship Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is holy, 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 holy. Yes, you Can you imagine those angels 24 7 saying, Holy, 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 holy. Surely we can say, Holy is thy name, holy, holy, this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Worship, 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 worship,
How many know oh, he's faithful? Oh, so faithful. He's faithful, faithful, you are faithful. Lord, oh, you're faithful. Oh, oh yes, so you are. Faithful. Lord, what a privilege. What a privilege. And it's an and honor, an honor to, worship, to worship, worship at your God. Yes, you 
shall be seen in 2019 in the OCC. Oh, don't you feel the anointing in this place? You got to let go and let God. Whatever you came with this morning, let it go. Whatever is on you, right, let it go. Shake it off, shake it off so we can hear from God. Just one word from the Lord. Just one word. Just one word from God. I'm expecting God to say one word to me today. Pull on the anointing, pull on it, pull on it, pull on it. Woo! Pull on the anointing in this place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You gotta get out of the way and let God have his way. God, I get out of the way so you can have your way. It's not about me. It's about you, God. Focus on him this morning. Are you ready to hear the word of God? Yes, yes. I'm ready to hear the word of God this morning. Thank God for the sweet, sweet, sweet anointing in this place. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm getting out of the way and let God have his way. Praise God. I want you to put your hands together. I have my son here this morning. He's going to minister. Come on, we can do better than that. Put your hands together. Let's receive Apostle Nathan Sloan. Woohoo! Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, gentlemen. Y'all blessed this morning? Hallelujah. I said, are you blessed this morning? Oh, come on now. I hear you now. I hear you now. 
I hear you now. I said, I hear you now. I hear you now. Glory to God. Give me a hug. <laughs> Come on, give, give Pastor, Pastor Douglas Mama here a, a hand and the worship team. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, come on. Well, I, feel, I, I feel an expectancy in the house. I, I, feel, like, I feel like God about to drop something. <laughs> oh, I feel you. 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 I feel, you. I feel, you. I feel his presence. I feel your hunger. I feel your excitement. I feel your desire. I feel God is going to meet you at the place of your expectation. And then he's going to go beyond what you're expecting. Amen. Do you believe God? I said, do you believe God? I, I, I have learned something about God. Those that are hungry are going to get filled. Those that are thirsty, oh, they're going to get a drink of heaven. That's one thing I learned about God. If you ain't hungry, he won't feed you. If you ain't thirsty, he can't give you nothing to drink. But, hey, blessed are those that are poor in spirit. Uh, hey, because they're going to see God. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That means you're so empty yet so hungry, you're going to see God like you ain't never seen God before. Amen. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. Father, we just give you glory and honor today, oh God. Father, we are hungry. We are thirsty. We have a great desire to see you, to hear you, to know you, oh God. To have an encounter on this morning, oh God. Let us encounter your presence. Let us encounter your glory. Let us encounter your word. Let us encounter your spirit, oh God. Let today, let our story change, oh Oh God, hey, let our stories change today. Oh God, let destinies change today. Let destiny change today. Oh God, let your purpose, let your what you have written, what you have designed, let it be established today. Let it be released today. Oh God, let the angels of heaven manifest in this place. Oh God, I command the angels of God to begin to move in this house and minister. You are ministering spirits unto the heirs of salvation and your assignment today is minister life to the people. As the word of God goes forth, you are required to minister and administer while they're here. You're administering to every circumstance and every situation in their life. Oh God. And for that, we give you thanks, oh God. I believe while ye hasha, while your people are here in this place, God, your angels are moving outside this place uh, on their behalf, oh God, moving in their houses, moving in their businesses, moving around their children, moving things, shaking things, changing things, oh God. You are mighty God, and your hand is not short to deliver. Woo! and we believe you today oh God that you are a God of deliverance you are God of liberty you are God that sets your people free oh Lord and we thank you that we shall acquire our freedom we shall receive our freedom today we shall take it by force somebody say take it by force oh take it by force Listen, the days that we were mundane, the days that we were just, you know, Christianity. I heard it said yesterday by a man of God. He said, uh, you know, God didn't create Christianity. And I thought, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you're right. Because God did not design religion. God built a, a kingdom set for relationship. I, people built Christianity. But God designed Christ. And when we are in Christ... We are Christians. Yeah. Yeah. But Christianity is become a religion. And God has never been about a religion. He said, my people have become dislocated from me. So I need to make man uh, and name him Emmanuel, Jesus. 
God among us, with us, and there for us. So that now he can relocate us. Oh, God. I think somebody's going to be relocated today. Huh? <laughs> so that we are relocated in the original design in which he designed us. Are you with me? Don't, don't get mad at Adam, you know. We, we, we all have made the same mistake. We can't be mad at Adam, Mama, but we've all made the same mistake of, of leaving God's presence. But I feel the hand of God gathering his children to return back to a place called my presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise. I, I, I feel you today. I feel your hunger again. I thank God for the opportunity to come and minister the word of the Lord to you. Amen. I was praying all night, just waiting on God. He didn't say nothing to me. I said, my God, I started getting dressed. I started sweating. I said, oh, Jesus, it's going to be a good day <laughs> when the man of God starts sweating. Yeah, I said, I ain't even made it out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you just, just tell your neighbor, be ready, because God's about to do something in your life. Be ready. Be expecting. Get hungry. Come on, just greet your neighbor real quick. Amen. I don't know if y'all y'all did offering already or what you gonna do, Mama. Y'all you wanna wait, take it up at the end when I finish. Y'all do that after I finish. I'm not, okay, all right. They'll receive the offering after the end. I'll I'll turn the mic over. Amen. You guys take care of it. Amen. Amen. Y'all greet your neighbor. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor this is this this is the day you've been waiting for. <laughs> this is the day you've been waiting on. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. Tell them, this is the day you've been waiting on. Hallelujah. Something good happening today. Let's just start out in Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Amen. God bless you, all, all of you that are here. If I've never seen you before, God bless you. It's good to see you now. But I tell you one thing, God got your number. <laughs> oh, he knows how to call. Amen. And he knows when he calls you, you're going to answer. Genesis chapter 4, hallelujah. Father, thank you for that, that anointing that is in this place. The anointing to minister, teach, and flow, and, and just do. Huh? <laughs> hallelujah. Let's just, let's just look at this. I, I want to kind of hit on some things about dominion. Tell your neighbor dominion. dominion. Uh, that's what God put in my spirit when I walked in the door. Amen. 
And so let's look at Genesis chapter 4. I just want to pick out something here. Genesis 4, chapter 7. We all know the story of, you know, Cain and Abel. Uh, but in verse 7, uh, let's, let's look at verse 5. It says, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. So God didn't have respect for Cain's offering. And Cain was very wroth or angry, upset, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? So why are you mad? <laughs> why are you mad, bro? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why are you mad, bro? <laughs> he said, look, Cain, why are you mad? Like, what did I do to you? <laughs> huh? He's, yeah, isn't, that, isn't that good about God? He's like, why are you mad, bro? <laughs> You thought we, th we, you, we thought we made that up. God had it in Genesis. Why are you mad, bro? <laughs> you know what I'm he said, why are you mad? Why are you mad? What you're doing is the issue, not what I'm doing. Are you with me? God's saying what you're doing is the issue, not what I'm doing. Huh? And so you, why, why are you mad at me? Why are you mad at your brother? Because what you're doing is affecting you, not your brother. Are you with me? Uh, your life is affecting you. It's not really affecting your brother. Uh, your life, your life. The life you live is the life that is affecting you, and the outcome of your life is affected by what you do. Are you with me? So, so Cain was given an offering, and we know the story. It was, it was leftovers, you know, trying to give God what's left over. Uh, let, let me take the leftovers to God. Never. Say never. never. Say not me. Now, I don't bring God leftovers. <laughs> I bring him the best. First and foremost. Amen. And so Cain had missed the point uh, uh, of, you know, maybe what his father Adam had taught. Because Cain uh, did not do what his brother Abel was doing. So Abel was doing it, and it was good, but Cain wasn't. Are you with me? They both came out of the same family. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> They came out of the same family, came out of the same parents, amen? But one was offering unto God correctly and honorably with love and integrity, and the other one was just giving leftovers. I'm not taking an offering. This is not an offering message. This is a message that to understand, amen? Are you with me? But he was giving leftovers. But Abel was giving the first, the best, amen? Giving the best to God. And God's hand was upon him. His blessing was upon him. But Cain was angry because he knew God wasn't receiving what he was doing. So sometimes as Christians, we can be angry because something don't seem to be working. But my God, God's saying you got to work something for something to work. If you ain't working something, something ain't going to work for you. So we can't get mad at our brother because they're blessed and things are moving and flowing and maybe not so. You have to go down to the point of what am I doing or not doing? Are you with me? We have to analyze our life to determine what is not in its place. What is not in order. Amen. Are you with me? See, God is telling, you know, Cain, don't be mad, bro. It's not my fault. It's your fault. Amen. Listen, I always tell people, listen, just, just learn something. God ain't mad at nobody. God love everybody. But we get mad. We get upset. You know what I'm saying? When things ain't going our way, boy, you, could, you, you know, good morning. I, I had a good morning this morning, by the way. And some things weren't just going. I think I changed five times. Like, oh, oh Jesus. I knew I should have set my clothes out, but it's been a busy week, you know, so... Uh, you know, praise the Lord. It works out okay, man. She dressed me, so don't get mad. <laughs> I love her. I love her. Amen. Why don't you give my wife a hand? Praise God. Pastor Sloan. Amen. Awesome woman of God. But listen, if things are not working, you have to discover what is missing. Are, are you with me? Or, or what is taking place? If we don't analyze our life or outcomes amen we don't analyze these things and determine what am i missing if cain would have said god i'm angry because i see abel is doing well and i'm just knowing you're not receiving mine what am i doing wrong <laughs> but he didn't have that attitude he was just mad he didn't have the attitude of what am i missing god 
what, is there something that I don't understand, God? Are you with me? You know, the Bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. What we don't know destroys us. What we don't know will wreck your life. Oh, shaka kitolomonde. What we don't know will take us to hell. Which is why the gospel must be preached so people can hear the gospel and know that Jesus died so they now know that heaven is available. Amen. Amen. And so what we don't know will take people to hell. It'll take them to a life of destruction. Are you with me? What we don't know. And so here is Cain. He's doing something, but he's angry about his outcome. And he's angry at the wrong person. Are you with me? Don't be angry at other people. You know, first you got to get mad at yourself. Ain't nothing wrong with getting mad at yourself. What's wrong with you? My God. Are you with me? You know, Jesus calls us disciples. You know what that is? That's a discipline. That means if you learn self-discipline, ain't nobody got to whoop you. Because you whoop yourself. Pow! I knew. I should be a glory to God. Father, forgive me. Are you with me? I'm telling you, you learn to whoop yourself. Ain't nobody got to whoop you. I'm helping somebody, mamas. <laughs> you know, it's difficult to, to discipline. I have wonderful children, by the way. And only one daughter is here. I'll get the other ones. <laughs> they missed this message. <laughs> but I have one. You know, out of all my daughters, I have one. Anytime she does something wrong, she goes, oh, Dad. I'm sorry, I missed it. I said, well, you learned your lesson. So she always got away without getting whooped. <laughs> Why? Because before she came, she was already whooping herself. I missed it. I messed up. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And there was nothing to deal with. I'm not helping somebody. This is the attitude that we must have. It's not an attitude of, you know, you know what you call just pitiful poor me. But it's a mentality of understanding that knowing if something is not working or something is missing, it's not God's fault. And it ain't your neighbor's. You've got to look in the mirror and discipline yourself to say who, what, when, and where. <laughs> Are you with me? Are you with me? When you look in the mirror, that's why the Bible says look into the perfect law of liberty. Why? That mirror so you can see yourself. <laughs> and the word that you see looking back at you is the thing that is supposed to deal with you. This, this is how it is. So Cain is mad at his brother. He mad at God. Why? Because he's doing wrong. How does that work? You know what I'm saying? I know ain't nobody in here and, you know, ain't nobody in our ministry that always blame other people. You know, ain't nobody here, ain't nobody in our ministry. Amen. <laughs> but there's some folk you meet out there and everything wrong. They say it's his fault, her fault, and, you know, my mama and my daddy and, you know, it's because my cousin Ed. <laughs> and you're like, who's cousin Ed? Well, you know, he visited me one day <laughs> and it's all his fault. My marriage fell apart because of Cousin Ed. <laughs> what? Cousin Ed visits you one time and you his fault. Are you with me? Instead of ever looking in the mirror and saying, what am I missing? <laughs> Are you with me? It's funny. We go to the doctor and say, this is hurting. Uh, something wrong right here. And we wait for a diagnosis from the doctor to tell us what's wrong with us. Not was wrong with a doctor. Or not was wrong with a person next to us at the hospital. We go to the doctor. So the doctor can x-ray you, analyze you, get up inside you with all kinds of machines. And then let you know something, something over here. Huh? That is an image of the word. I said that is an image of the word. It gets up inside you, it pokes you, it prods you, it x-rays you, it, it gets all up in you and around you and identifies the issue that keeps you from running, keeps you from jumping. 
Are you with me? But Cain was looking at everything else, but he wasn't looking at himself. Are you with me? And this is an issue. And as Christians, we cannot have that kind of mentality. Amen. We cannot have a mentality of it's everybody else's fault. Wave at me. Y'all not mad at me. I'm talking to somebody else. Y'all, y'all going to preach this to somebody else. This, this is not for you. It's for other people. <laughs> Are you with me? And, and so we cannot have an attitude of blaming everybody else for what's going on in our life. Uh, for some reason in this generation, it's everybody else's fault. Hmm? In this millennial, y'all, I, I don't know who millennials, I, I don't do that kind of thing. The millennials, no habla espanol. Me neither, don't worry about it, don't tell him. <laughs> don't tell him, no way. Just nod, amen, amen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So I don't know what it is with this environment that we have in our society, but it's blame everybody else. Uh, everybody else's fault that this ain't working. Everybody else's fault that that ain't happening. Everybody else's fault. Amen. But it's for the believer to stand up and say, I miss something. Amen. What makes us strong believers is to take accountability uh, and be disciplined about our life enough to say, I miss something. God is perfect. Uh, we are being perfected. So if we're the ones being perfected, it must be something in our life personally. Are you with me? Now I tell people, okay, he got it. He said he got it, okay. I tell people a lot of times, some things are not your fault, but they are your fight. I wish you would understand what I just said. Sometimes you're born into an environment you didn't create. Oh, you better hear what I'm saying. Sometimes you were birthed in an atmosphere that you did not create that atmosphere. But when you were birthed into that atmosphere, whatever is taking place in that atmosphere has an effect on your life. Are you with me? And so just because it's not your fault doesn't mean it's not your fight. Oh, Jesus. It doesn't matter if it's not your fault. It's not the matter if you caused it or what took place. But when you show up, it becomes your fight. Are you with me? It wasn't my fault that I was born in San Antonio, you know, in in a project neighborhood. Uh, I told the people at the church, they didn't believe me one time. They didn't believe me. They said, you grew up where? I said, I grew up in an all-black neighborhood. Are you with me? Uh, We were the only light-skinned folk in this project in San Antonio. When my, y'all, y'all met my mom. If y'all were here, you met my mama, you know, my little mom. She woke up in the morning. She looked outside and said, honey, where did you move us to? He said it was the easiest place I can find, the quickest place I can get into. We were the only, don't get mad at me, we were the only light-skinned folk in the entire complex. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So people didn't believe me. We were preaching that revival the the other day, a couple months back, and some lady came, and I prophesied to her, and she came forward. She said, I'm from San Antonio. I said, oh, really? So we started talking. I said, where are you from? She said, I'm over here on W.W. White Road. I said, I grew up on Rigsby Avenue. Church just stopped. We started talking. I said, tell these people where I grew up, you know the place. Because they don't believe me. She said, oh, yeah, I know that place. I was born in that place. It's not my fault. I was born in there. It's not my fault that every weekend people were killing people. That's not my fault. I was born in the place that on Saturday night you had to hide under the bed. That wasn't my fault. Are you with me? It's not your fault where you're born and what environment you come into. That aspect is not your fault. But what you do about it is up to you. How you deal with it is up to you. Amen. 
Listen, Cain and Abel, it wasn't their fault their daddy screwed up. Was it? No, it wasn't their fault. Their daddy just cut God off. That wasn't their fault. But it became their fight. Oh, Lord. It wasn't their fault that Adam sinned, disconnected from God. Huh? You think God made Adam. First thing Adam saw when he opened his eyes was God. Isn't that amazing? First thing he saw when he opened his eyes. God. God. Ain't no, he didn't see his mama. He didn't see no doctor or no, you know, what do you call them ladies? Help. Thank you very much. I appreciate y'all. Y'all are wonderful people. He didn't open his eyes to see a midwife. He saw God. Cain and Abel saw mama and daddy. Huh? But Adam had disconnected from God. It's not their fault. But it becomes their fight. And it becomes a choice in which how they fight their fight. Oh my. Are you with me? Either they're going to link up with God and fight with God in them, or they're going to fight God and everybody else. Are you with me? There are things that are not your fault, but they are linked to, to your life. Huh? Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yeah. There are things that are linked to your life simply because you were born. You were born into an environment. Some people are born in a godless environment. Amen. I thank God for my, my, my natural father was a Christian and he raised us in, in a godless environment. Amen. I mean, it was, it was craziness. Oh, everywhere we live, craziness. But daddy kept God in our face. Yeah, he said, we're going to serve the Lord. <laughs> like it or not, we're going to church. Uh, where's those people at today? Like it or not, I don't care how old you are, you're going to church. And, and, and remind me when I get to my daughters at the next service. <laughs> They're going to be at the next service. They're going to hear it. I didn't get no sleep, daddy. Neither did daddy. <laughs> Y'all going to come to the second service just to hear me talk to them. But where is the mentality and the attitude that we are going to serve the Lord no matter what? Somebody say, that's me. I said, say, that's me. And we're going to serve God no matter what. Hey, we're all in. Huh? I heard Kenneth Hagin say one time, he was teaching the Bible school. He said, some of you guys, you say the preacher, y'all preach. He said, I don't know about none of that. He said, because y'all still here for 20 years in Bible school, you ain't preached one lick. Are you with me? He said, I remember when God called me to preach, it was sink or swim, I'm jumping in. If I drown, I drown preaching the gospel. What I'm assigned to do, I'm going to do. Whether I make it or I don't make it, I'm going to go for it. That's the right mentality and the right attitude. Amen. That no matter what we face and no matter what we go through, we're going to hang on to God. We're going to let God reveal life to us and understanding to us. And then we're going to break out. Oh, I said, you're going to break out. I said, you're going to break out. You're going to break out because you're going to catch a revelation that whatever hell has been fighting your life, whatever disadvantage that came in before you were born, you're going to see that by the grace of God and the power of God is going to enable you to break out. Are you with me? Mm, so some things are not your fault. Huh? And sometimes things that are not your fault cause and effect takes place. You begin to participate and get into stuff and foolishness and, you know, religion and tradition and, you know, godlessness, even in our culture of church. Why? Because environment. Are you with me? So even though, check this out, Cain was giving an offering to God. It was like his life was godless. Huh? Hold on. He bringing something to God. He must believe that God is 
because he's bringing him an offering. But his life doesn't portray God. Are you with me? Sometimes we can live in an environment where people believe in a God, but don't surrender to a God. But just because others don't surrender to that God they believe doesn't mean that you should take the same path. In fact, any believer that is in this place now should gird up your loins, the Bible say, and get ready to run. Because there is a fire from heaven about to hit the planet and it's looking for able bodies to say, that's me, God. Let the fire fall. Let the wind blow. Because I don't care what's going on around me. I'm going to run with God. Oh, I'm going to fly with God. Amen. So we cannot let our environments dictate the outcome of our lives. I said we cannot let our environments dictate the outcomes of our lives. We are environment changers. Are you with me? Listen, when you move into a house and you don't like something in that house, whether it be the floor, uh, the paint, the trim, I don't know. My, I don't like the bathroom. We're going to what? Remodel the bathroom. When you have the power and ability to do it, you do it. You got to hear what I'm saying to you. You bought, you bought a house. You're like, oh, I like this house. I, I just don't like this. But the whole house you like. Just the one thing you don't like. So as soon as you have power to change that thing, uh, you say, I got the money for it now. I'm tired of that bathroom. We're going to remodel that entire thing. We're going to make it look like I want it to look. That is called an environment changer. Oh, you go in and you change that environment because you do not like that thing. You do not let that thing change you. Ah, you see, this is where we get into issues as Christians. We, we don't like something, but yet when we're empowered, we don't do nothing with that power to change it. This is where we go wrong. Yet we'll take our own home and put new paint. I don't like the color. Huh? Give me some, some browns, some blues. I don't know. Boom. And you put it up there. Why? Because you have the power to do something about it. Are you with me? <laughs> and this is our Christian life. Huh? That we are here on assignment. Huh? We are birthed in an environment. Are you with me? And though you don't like the environment you're birthed in, it is your responsibility to change it. You know what's so beautiful? Is that it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. So you are simply a vessel in which the Holy Ghost says, I want inside of you so that I can now work through you. To change the very environment in which I placed you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the Holy Ghost. When, I, I heard a man of God say this to me and I learned something. He said when you're irritated, it's because God's irritated. I said, oh yeah, that's right. Because sometimes I go into place, yeah, not here, but I go into places. Because I preach in different places all the time. I go some place. I'm like, oh God, why am I so irritated, Lord? And I had to pray for 20 minutes in the spirit. Like what, what is irritating me, Lord? Is that me or what? You know. But I learned that when I'm in the spirit instantly, when my spirit's irritated, it's because God's irritated. And then I learned when God is irritated, this is because God wants to change something. Oh, I said God wants to change something. In other words, God's looking for somebody to get irritated in their spirit that they'll open up their mouth and prophesy a thing and say something. Are you with me? Listen, listen, I learned when in my own house, when I walk into my house and I was irritated, I said, why am I irritated, you know? I look around, start praying, why am I irritated? Then I go look at my children in the eye. I'm looking for the irritation. 
They know. She can, tell, she can testify. I look at them. Mm, I'm irritated in my spirit. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. I become a detective, you know. And I look them in the eye. I look them in the eye. I say, oh, what you do? What you do? Huh? What happened? She said, what you mean, daddy? I didn't do nothing. What you mean you didn't do nothing? I, I, done, I done x-rayed everybody else. And when I x-ray you, I feel irritated. I say, you done something that is irritating God and it's irritating me. Let's deal with it. Are you with me? Why? Why? Because God loves us so much that he wants to get every thorn out of your life. Because the thorns in you irritate him. Oh. I said, the thorns in you irritate God. Mm. <laughs> Go ahead, get yours. I feel him in the place too. Noskarange. Etalaba. Whoa. Mm. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Asha. Mm. God empowers you. I said, God empowers you to effect and change the very environment you walk into. You are empowered by God. Mm. You are not hopeless and you are not helpless. It is an it is a responsibility of the believers. Every time you go somewhere, there is the God of heaven inside of you to change the very environment you walk into. Amen. It, it, it is simply knowing who you are. Knowing that you are a child of the most high God. And whatever is not of God needs to get out. Are you with me? Abel had the same opportunity Cain had. Cain had the same opportunity Abel had. But Abel chose to give the best. And Cain had the wrong attitude. Are you with me? Are you here? Are you receiving something? You are empowered by God. But you must understand, God puts you here on this earth not to strive nor survive. God didn't assign you to strive on earth nor survive on earth. He assigned you to change it. You say, what can I do? Oh, just be filled. <laughs> just be filled. Just be filled. We went to go eat the other day. I forget where we were. We went somewhere. I remember, we went to that one place. Uh, uh, we went to go eat at the, um, uh, the Mexican restaurant right there on 45. We sit down. Yeah, Jim, the Jimmy place. <laughs> we sit down. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we sat down. And when we sat down, the lady came up and said, I, Can I help you? And she, <laughs> she blinking. I started laughing. I said, you all right? <laughs> I figured she didn't know why she was blinking. But every time she hit our table, she started blinking. I said, it's okay. It's just God. <laughs> it's just God. You came to wait on God. You don't realize that you walked up to a table where God was sitting at the table. Oh, he's just dressed up in flesh. Ah, 
and he got this face and he sounds like this man but inside the man is God as with you also inside of you is God almighty and you are empowered just to let God out Ooh, somebody said just let him out the reason he came in is because he wanted to come out. God didn't want to come in to be hidden. God wanted to come in to be exposed. Oh, he just wants to be revealed. He just wants to be exposed. Well, I feel somebody open the gift up, mama. I feel you open it up. So when God moves in your life, it doesn't matter the environment. It doesn't matter the place you are at. What matters is your willingness to allow God to move out of you. Huh? Are you with me? Christianity is a religion. I said Christianity is a religion. Are you with me? Being a Christian is not. Are you with me? You understand? Christianity is a religion. But being a Christian is not a religion. It is an empowerment. In which the power of heaven comes and lives inside of you. Oh, the bait is salvation. Oh, I said the bait is salvation. God baits you and says to you, you do not have to go to hell because I already sent my son to hell. That's the bait to say, I don't want to live in eternal damnation. And then once you take the bait, baby. Now there's a drawing in. Oh, God starts reeling you in. He said, I only hooked you to get you like me. I only hooked you so that I can eat you. Oh, God. Because when I eat you, now you and me become one. And then I release you. Oh, I catch and I release you. And when I release you, I send you down avenues. I send you down streams. I put you in the ocean. I let you swim in places. All oh, that when you get there, you change the very environment. Mm. Are you here? Are you here? Well, I feel God empowering you right now. I feel faith rising in you. was never meant to be a school it was meant to be supper uh, Jesus said come eat with me uh, he always ate with his disciples it's like all you are you come on like eat up. my god all you see Jesus is sitting down eating the Pharisees are like when your people are gonna fast <laughs> When I leave, Jesus said, but right now we're going to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. We're going to walk through the fields and we're going to eat. We're going to come to another house and we're going to eat. We're going to be on the side of a hill and we're going to eat. And when I eat, I'm going to feel everybody. Oh, Zacchaeus, get off that tree. I'm coming to your house. I'm going to have supper with you. Christianity became a religion and we turned it into a, a society of school knowledge, the head knowledge. Nothing wrong with learning. Tell your neighbors you should learn something. <laughs> but I discovered something that we are ever learning. <laughs> ever learning. But never coming to the full knowledge of him. Never coming what to the fullness of who he is. 
In other words, we are ever learning, but we always come short of who he is. When we focus on always the education of Christianity, we're missing the empowerment of who he is. My question is, if he snatched up three worldly men or 12 worldly men, amen, snatched them up, 12 worldly men, said, come follow me. And in three years, in fact, less than three years, he sent them out and they were empowered just like him. In less than three years, they were casting demons out. They were laying hands on the sick. People were being resurrected. Craziness when they showed up. I'm talking when they showed up in an environment, that environment got violent. Uh, are you with me? Wow. So why is it in Christendom today, we are 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and we learn everything but do nothing? Don't get me. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to them out there. <laughs> the reason is, is because we don't seem qualified to do anything. Because we've turned it into what I know, head knowledge. Uh, I understand I just said to you what you don't know destroys you. I'm telling you what you don't know is that part that is destroying you. Because what we're always trying to know, we're missing who we are. My daughter is my daughter. Do you know when she discovered she was my daughter? When she was old enough to hear my voice. And do you know, when she was old enough to recognize the voice of her father, she was old enough to know that she owns everything I have. And that she has everything that I am. It doesn't come because she knows more. Mm. Oh, I wish I could help somebody. It doesn't come because she knows more. It comes because she knows who she is. She knows who she is. She knows she is in our family. And because she knows she is in our family, she has family rights. Not based on what she knows, but based on who she is. Are you with me? So you are birthed into this environment. Uh -huh. And you are on self-discovery. But we go into self-education or education and not self-discovery. Because the more you know about God, doesn't mean you know God. Are you with me? I'm helping somebody today. Because your story is changing. I'm not saying you should not learn the Bible. I'm not saying none of that. Hear me. Don't put words in my mouth. I'm telling you, I was raised in church. Uh, so I had some thought process because I was raised in church. But I'm telling you, when I met God, that thought process was wrecked. <laughs> and one of the very things God said to me, he said, you think you know me. Come on, like, like God asked, asked Cain, hey, hey, what's up with you, bro? Don't be mad. What you mad about, bro? God said to me, you think you know me. I, I'll never forget that conversation with God, 1999. <laughs> uh, right after my natural father passed on, I had a major encounter with Jesus. And then after that, I had another encounter, and God's when God told me, you think you know me. I said, well. You know, you try to rationalize it. Well, I've been, to, I, I mean, I grew up in church. He said, and? <laughs> Can you imagine God saying, and? Is that the best you got? I said, well, I grew up in church. I got saved when I was little. I got filled with the Holy Ghost when I was 13, 14 years old. He said, and? You think you know me? I said, well, well, yeah. He said, you don't know me. You know how he explained it? 
Because if you knew me, the life you were living would be totally different. Are you with me? Once you know God, like get to know him, like, oh, you God, everything in your environment changes. Uh, all of a sudden, it's not you trying to, per se, make a change. Like when we buy a house and we make a change by paying. Just allowing God in you. By you knowing him as your heavenly father, automatically you are allowing him to move out of you. It don't take long, I promise you. Don't take long. One encounter with God. Eight months later, our entire life shifted. Uh, my parents thought, my mom, she thought I was nuts. My sister, she thought, she thought you crazy. What's wrong with you? I said, no, it's what's right with me. I have discovered the one I have been missing, even as a church boy. Are you with me? So you see Cain here is having a conversation with God. But he's still mad. Oh, Lord. Why? Why is Cain all messed up the way he is? And yet he's talking to God. Because the God he's talking to, he don't know. God he's talking to, the God that is talking to him and saying, why you mad, bro? Is the God he doesn't know. Oh, Lord. That means when we know God, it automatically allows the DNA of God to begin to change everything around our life. That means we have to have a mentality like Paul said, all I want to know <laughs> is Christ. I just want to know him. He wasn't saying I want to know his life story. He's saying I want to know him. At the end of Paul's ministry, his all, all his mindset was, I just want to know him. Uh, I want to know him. The more you know him, the more you realize, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Shout out Monday. Am I helping somebody? Hmm. The more you know him. Oh God, how do I say that, Lord? <laughs> the more you realize. Oh God. I'm gonna bust some talk. Is that all right? Yeah, I'm 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 gonna drop the mic and go to the Go to my church, mama. So go. <laughs> Let them get mad at me. The more you know him, the more you realize you are uh, him. The more you know him, the more you know you are him. you know him the more you know you are him but you came right out of him and what you come out of you are that thing are you here are you receiving Jesus said, me and my father, we are one person. Yeah. When you have seen me, you have seen the father. That's right. 
Why are you asking me? Show me the Father. Have I not been with you long enough that you should know you're looking at him? Oh! We cannot be focused on these areas of lack or missing. We must see them and then recognize, wait a minute. God is perfect. I'm missing something. I'm missing my identity. Oh my God. Oh my God. Because when you recognize who he is and who you are, what is uh, not there or what shouldn't be there starts to change. Are you here? I'm helping somebody, I hope. Uh, uh, you see, it really comes down to something. Yieldedness. Surrender. Submission. Yielding. Quench not my spirit. Why? Because as my spirit is in you. And you are yielding to him. He's wrecking everything around you. Ay, ay, ay. Are you here? So let's look at this. And I think I should be done here in a minute. It says, but unto Cain and to his offering, verse 5, he had not respect. And Cain was very angry or mad or wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth or angry, and why is thy countenance fallen? Watch this. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? That means if you <laughs> recognize that you're not doing well. If you don't recognize that you're missing the boat, you should say, I missed the boat, Lord. He said, now you're accepted. Oh. Are you with me? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Meaning he wasn't sinning yet. But he was getting ready to walk into it. That means his attitude was taking him to the sin lifestyle. The Bible says be angry and sin not. He was getting angry and he was coming to the point of sin. And it was his attitude that was taking him to the point of sin. Are you with me? And unto thee shall be his desire. Are you listening? He said, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. What? God said, sin lieth at the door. His desire is for you, but you shall rule over him. He called sin a person. He called sin. There is somebody at your door that desires you, but it is up to you. Sin is a person. That's why you must accept Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is a person. Oh, and when you receive that person, he breaks the power of the other person. Sin is not per se an action as it is an acceptance. Oh, Lord, this is going to go far. <laughs> Sin is not per se an action. It's an acceptance. He's saying to him, sin lies at your door. He desires you. Will you marry him? Will you join him? Will you accept him? Uh, wow. And then he said what? He said, he said, and thou shalt rule over him. He wants you. But you better recognize you have power to rule over him. 
It is your decision to have dominion over him. But he can have dominion over you. Are you with me? Ah. So knowing God helps you know you. Hmm? This is why we must spend time with him. When we spend time with God in this society, turn off your phone. Turn off your radio. Turn off your TV. Don't get mad at me. The TV's not a devil. Don't get me wrong. I grew up in a church. The TV was the devil, you know. Everything was the devil. No, 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 no. no. The choice was. Anyway. <laughs> if you turn it off. Your focus is on the Lord. Are you in my help as a mother? The more you are in focusing in him, focusing on him, the more you're discovering you. The more your identity comes alive. Are you with me? And as your identity comes alive in you, automatically, say automatically. automatically. Say automatically. automatically. If you know who you are, automatically you do who you are. We are trying to be Christians. No. We are not to try to be Christians. Well, I'm trying to be Christian-like. What? No, don't try to be Christian-like. Know you by knowing him and automatically it comes right out of you. I mean, it just comes right out of you. It, whatever you face, he comes out of you. I say hey, automatically. Automatically. Say, well, let, me, let me try to pray. No, don't try to pray. You are prayer. Automatically, automatically, you are. It's knowing who you are by knowing him. And you can't know him unless you relate with him. Even parents and children, you, you, you may know, but you may not know. But the more time we spend, the more you know. I'm just like that, my God. I kind of walk like him too. Are you with me? Yes. Are you receiving something? Yes. So today I want you to understand you have been birthed for dominion. Yes. Uh, you have been birthed to dominate. You have been birthed to rule. Uh, but not by your ability. But by your empowerment. By your empowerment. But empowerment comes by knowing him. Uh, what you don't know destroys you. In other words, if you don't know God going to stand and fight for you, you'll fight for yourself. Huh? As many times as we've been hit, you know, or try to get, we just, we came like a palm tree in the desert. Every wind, we just lean. Yeah. Uh -huh. I could come back and swing it. No, I come back with a word. Just let the word deal with it. Come back with the Lord. Let the Lord deal with it. Amen. Are you with me? So if you don't know these things, then you do these instead of letting them do. Am I helping somebody? You are not to make your own way. Your way is already made. I said your way is already made. Your victory is already won. You're not trying to get the victory. You got the victory. The victory is inside of you. It is to come out of you. Oh, I believe the victory is coming out of you today. Amen. I said the victory is coming out of you today. I said the victory is coming out of you today. It's coming out of you today. It's coming out of you today. Of you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go here. And then I'm, I don't know what time. I got I to gotta cut here soon. Let me just finish a couple of these scriptures here. Are you receiving something? Let's say my story is changing. Oh, my story is changing. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. Let's just look here. We'll go, we'll go to the next scripture. 
Isn't the Lord wonderful? Look at your neighbor and say, you are too. Oh, tell him, come on, you are too. The Lord is wonderful and so are you. Oh, you are too. <laughs> I see him in your eyes. I feel him next to me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My God, this is so good, this is so good, this is so good, this is so good. <laughs> oh, Shandara Kaye. Oh, this is so good. This is so good, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Touch your neighbor, tell him you feel like God. <laughs> Oh, I didn't say it. Jesus said it. He said it right here in your Bible. You feel like God. Uh, that's why the Bible says lay hands. Why? Because God in you is touching. Okay, all right, all right. Therefore, verse 5, this is Ephesians 1, 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. <laughs> oh, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. He said, give you the spirit of wisdom <laughs> and revelation in the so if he's a spirit, I know the scripture, I got I to gotta say this disclaimer because people say, well, I don't have to study. No, you have to study. Yeah. Study to show you something for you. But to know him, you must get that spirit to know him. <laughs> you must receive the spirit. And the spirit draws you in knowing him. <laughs> All right, hallelujah. I hope I'm helping somebody. And the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Amen. That means when you're knowing him, your eyes are opening. And you'll see what you've never seen before. You'll understand what you never understood before. You'll recognize who you are like you've never known who you are. Amen. And that you may know, amen, what is the hope of his calling. In other words, why he hooked you. <laughs> so once his spirit gets in you and you have an understanding that you just need to know him it opens your eyes to see what you've never seen and then there's a discovery of why he hooked you and the reason he hooked you is because he's about to use you I said he's about to use you he's about to use you he's about to manifest outside of you amen Oh, you may know what the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? Somebody say, I believe. I believe who I am. I believe who he is in me. Mm. And so his power towards you. In other words, he releases power towards you because you believe. Because you believe. And there is a power released toward you or to you or into you. Amen. A power that is released. It is not your power. Uh, but it is given to you. Why? That power is what affects the entire environment in which you are placed in. Are you with me? Somebody say, I'm an environment changer. I mean, we got all kind of environmentalists today, you know, praise God for that. But this is the true environmentalist right here. When we come in, we change every environment, amen? This is who you do. This is who you are. You change every environment. All right, y'all going to help me finish here? It says, according to his working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his right hand in where? Heavenly some will say it. Heavenly, heavenly places where far above all principality and power and might and, mm, and every name. So he sat you in a high place, a place that is above every dominion. Uh, it's okay. Sin wants to dominate you. But if you recognize 
that I empower you to dominate him. Uh, Jesus came, died, went, went, went to heaven, and he sat you next to him, saying, come here, come here. Let me show you from my view who you are. <laughs> and let me help you understand the empowerment that has taken place in your life. Amen? Tell your neighbor, we've been born to dominate. Uh, we, we, we are the head and not the tail. Amen. And so far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Amen. And so there's an age to come in which you living dominion here will no dominion there. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is what? Hold on. Who are you? I said, who are you? I said, who are you? Who are you? If you're his body, you're him. Uh, if you are his body, you are him. That means when you walk in, he walked in. When you go to the grocery store, Jesus is going to the grocery store. Hey, when you go to the restaurant after this, I, I, I wish I could go with you, but <laughs> maybe we can sneak a snack in or something. <laughs> but when you go in, you're his body. You are the manifestation of Jesus Christ on earth. Hi. Are you here? That means whatever is coming at your life is actually coming at Jesus. Whatever storm is blowing against your life is actually blowing against Jesus. The only difference is he's asleep in the boat of most Christians. Until somebody either wakes up or wakes him up. They didn't listen. Jesus didn't want Jesus, Jesus didn't want them to wake him up because they didn't need to. In fact, when they woke him up, he got mad. What's wrong with you waking me up, Lord? Don't you know who you are? Why are you waking me? You're just like me. I'm with you, and you're just like me. Don't come poking me, waking me up. You got to wake up. I am the body of Christ. I am him. Wherever I go, he's right there with me. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you got to know. You got to know. Listen, I know I'm married. Ain't nobody got to tell me. You married? Yeah, I'm married. I've been married 26 years. Hey Amen. Thank God. Huh? But ain't nobody gotta tell me. You married? Oh, I know I'm married. I know. I don't even have to think about it. Oh, uh, I just told you something. I don't gotta look at my ring to know I'm married. I can take my ring off and know I'm married. I'm helping somebody. Uh, we ain't gotta tell you you are you a Christian. Uh, you should act like, know like, walk like, look like, smell like. Shake everything like. <laughs> That's what's happening to you right now. You're being empowered that wherever you go, that power is coming out of you. It's coming out of you. It's coming out of you. Whatever you touch shall prosper. Whatever you speak to, go and listen to your voice. Whatever you talk to, got to obey you. Whatever you say has to hear God speaking. Na na sheka na, nanda kista. Are you here? Ah, I'll finish that. Are you empowered? You know who you are. Somebody say I'm the body. Look at me. You're looking at Jesus. Don't be ashamed. You don't need to be scared of that. 
See, the more you start saying, I look just like Jesus, the more you're going to look just like him. Stop trying to focus on how to get there. Just know you're there. They look at me again, I look like Jesus. You know, if you look at my eyes sometimes, you see fire. Huh? I was preaching a couple weeks back. What was it, a couple last year? I was preaching. I, I was gone. <laughs> Somebody had to take me to the truck. When I got in the truck, my daughter opened the door. She said, ah! I said, wow, what's the matter? She said, your eyes are like fire. I said, really? Let me look at the mirror. <laughs> she fell out, fell out the truck when she opened the door. And she, she gave me a blanket and said, cover your eyes. <laughs> she did. Uh, and she wasn't playing either because I knew I felt fire so heavy in me. I'm saying to you, when I look in your eyes, I see fire. Hallelujah. Uh, when I look in your eyes, I see fire. Because he's a fire from the waist down. And he's a fire from the waist up. When I look into your eyes, I see fire. Mm. Oh, that means whatever you face has to face fire. Oh, I wish you heard what I said. Whatever you face has to face fire. Every time you open up your eyes, fire is coming out. It's you. That's who you are. You're not without the answer. You are the answer. Touch your neighbor, tell him you're the answer. You're the answer. Ooh, you're not in need. You're the answer to need. My God. Mm, stand to your feet. Tell your neighbor, you're the answer. Take your dominion. Take your dominion. Take your authority. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Amen. There's no fear in this place. There's no fear in your life. No fear in you. Amen. No fear in you. No fear in you. Uh, how? 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 No fear in you. How? 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 Do you know what's afraid of fire? Uh, everything. Is afraid of fire. Everything is afraid of fire. That means there is no fear in fire. Oh, there is no fear. In fire, there is no fear. But fear comes because of fire. There is no fear in you. But when you show up, everything is afraid of you. Amen. I said everything. Uh, debt is afraid of you. Why? Because you have fire debt cancellation in you. I said you have fire debt cancellation in you. The devil is afraid of you. Because when he sees you, he sees fire. Hey, when you walk in, fire just showed up. And everything. When you showed up, fire showed up. Huh? Huh? I said fire showed up when you showed up. And everything is afraid of fire. Huh? When fire comes, every animal runs. I said when fire comes, every animal runs. Every wicked thing runs. Every evil thing runs. When fire comes, the birds fly. The dogs run. The animals take off because fire showed up. So everything facing your life, let fire chase it off. I said, I command the fire to chase it off. I command the fire to chase off everything that is touch on my ear, trying to touch your life, trying to come against your life. The fire chase it off in the name of Jesus mm. 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 I shake here there was a sister I'm, I'm finishing there was a sister the other day that's all that's all right <laughs> you gotta understand I just gotta let some go you know I just gotta let some go uh, hey, hey, hey. 
There was a sister that came in the other day. And when I was in my office, the Lord showed me two babies coming from the sky. And I said, wow, well, I see two babies. Lord, what's that? He said, there is a lady who is barren and she'll be in your service today. When I walked up, there was this couple, brand new to the church. And I just left it alone, started preaching. The Spirit of God got on me. I said, now, whoever is not able to have children, God is opening your womb. And that woman began to weep. I said, all right, you called yourself out. Come here. <laughs> you know, sometimes first time guests, you got to be careful, you know. <laughs> yeah. Take it easy. <laughs> but those, Nisha. But those that are around you, you can just go for it. Yeah, yeah. So if I go for it, you know why, because you're around me. But in that, <laughs> but in that moment, I saw God open up her womb. She told my, my wife yesterday, she said, I put my hand and I feel my womb. Ah, I say, yeah, you feel it because it's open. Yes. I say to you, whatever is closed in your life, let it be open today. Whatever has been cut off in your life, I command it to be open today. I command your spiritual wombs to be open. I said I command your spiritual wombs to be open. I command your financial wombs to be open. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everything that the enemy thought he stole from you in your life, I command it to be broken and restored. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God. Somebody should take it. Just go ahead and take it. Just take it. He's here. He's doing it. Just take it. Go ahead. Take it. Take it. Take it. Don't worry about your neighbor. Take yours. Take yours. Take yours right now. Come on. Take it by force. 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 Take, by force. take your miracle by force. Take your healing by force. Take your breakthrough by force. Just get it. Grab it. Take it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh, shakaran de leleste. Era sotelele meinda. Meinda, meinda boskar abaye. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever has been barren in your life, it must produce today. I said, whatever has been barren in your life. From this point beyond, whatever was barren, whatever was broken, whatever wasn't working in your life, I say to that thing that you shall live, you live today, you work today, you open today, you change today. <laughs> Whatever's in your house, somebody say I'll receive it. Whatever's inside of your home right now that does not work I speak to that thing right now and I command that item to begin to work I speak to everything in your house I don't care if it's your car I don't care if it's your watch I don't care if it's your appliance I don't care what it is I speak to it by the authority of heaven and I command that thing to begin to work Today, I command everything that is there to begin to move in the name of Jesus. Woo. Oh, God. Somebody say, I'll take that right now. Listen, listen. Yes, Shama. There are things in your house that should be working. God is saying it shall start working. I got in now, yeah. Somebody going to catch it. Don't, don't let one person get it because they're going to come back and testify and say, oh, you know, I had this thing and it had been broke for years and the prophet said it's not going to be broke no more. They're going to bring it to this house and say, look, it works now. I say, whatever didn't work shall work for you now. In the name of Jesus. Are you with me? Somebody say, I receive it. I receive it. Hallelujah. Lift your hands real quick. I got to get you out of here. I got to get you out of here. Father, we just thank you for your word right now. Thank you for revelation. 
Thank you for understanding. Thank you that we are, oh, we know who we are. <laughs> we know that we are the body of Christ. We are Jesus in this place right now. Oh, we are made in your image. We are designed by you. We are birthed by you. And you do not birth anything other than your kind. Mm. And I thank you that we're born after you, oh God. And we are like you. We are just like you. I thank you, oh God, that we have been empowered today to know that we are just like you. And whatever irritates you, irritates us. And you empower us to deal with it, to change it, to resurrect it, to, to cause it to live, to cause it to be transformed, to cause it to turn. And we thank you for that and we take it by faith. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give the Lord some praise real good. Come on, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. We praise your Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You ready, man of God? You know. Awesome. Oh, God. I'll I, I tell you what. I'm going to do. I'm going to release the moment. You, 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 you just, yeah. Nitala. Nikala maka dikala boka. Nekrats korum batishka. Ekatoma, Ekalai, Ningoso. Just lift your hands. Nis Ketalanga. All is well. And all shall be well. Easter, Easter Lakita. Easter Kataliki. Ekitalakama Kayo. My God, just lift your hands right now. Hang with me, brother. Hang with me. Hang with me. Hang with me. Hang with me. Shh. Hang with me. Fire. Shoot. Esther. Esther. Hang with me. Come on, just lift your hands. Just hang with me. Hey, 
should dance a little bit. You ready to dance? You ready to dance? Get her up. Let her dance. Give her something to dance. Go ahead, sing. Give her something to dance to. She need to dance. If you had any knee issue, you should be dancing right now. Don't be yet you're worrying. Never Come stop, here. you never Come stop here. working. Never Watch stop, me. never stop working. Even when I don't see you, you're working. Even when I can't be with you working. Never stop, never stop working. Never wow. stop, never Let stop working. Even when I don't see you, you're working. Even when I can't be with you working. Never stop, never stop working. Somebody bless the Lord. Go ahead, get your dance on. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I feel the miracle worker in the house. I feel the glory in the house. Somebody should dance a little bit. Somebody should rejoice a little bit. I tell you, the power of God is moving in this place right now. There is a move of God that is taking place inside, outside, all around your life right now. Come on. Come on, somebody just get in and dance. I'm telling you the Holy Ghost is moving in this place. That's all right, bring it to me. Oh, I wish I had some more people that knew how to dance in this place. They can help this brother out. I said they can help this brother out.
through the street. Fire. The... All the way out the door. All the way out the door. That's where he went. Just out the door. Just like that. I had to go get him. Flew out the exit door into the street. You know what I'm saying? Pray for this one guy. I didn't even pray for him. I didn't even pray for him. You see, God is with you. I said, God is with you. I didn't even pray for him. I walked up to him. God said, Tell him these words. When I spoke the power, you were right behind him. And he went over you. Three rows back. One word lifted the man off the ground and took him three rows back just by the word of God. And God saying to you, this is your day of transformation. He has rewritten the story. In other words, the outcome of what looked like was going to destroy your life has been rewritten. And you are getting a new lease. From this day.
till I overflow. I've got to run over. I've got to run over. Fill me up until I
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I really don't want to say anything. Uh, I got a, a great respect for the glory. I got a great respect for the apostle, the, for the apostle and what he, what he brings. And I really don't want to say anything to mess with that. It's offering time. And uh, wait, 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 wait. Let's not, let's not clap. Let's, let's stay in the glory. Let's not laugh. Let's not talk. Uh, I don't want to mess with it because there's still somebody here that's trying to receive. And uh, once we do that, let's just go home. Bring your offering, and we're just going to walk out in the glory. And uh, I don't want to mess with it. Y'all know what to do. Just, you know, bring your offering and you know. Okay, I'll say this. I got instruction. Uh, next Sunday is uh, Go Western Day. So I don't want to be the only one here with blue jeans on. So uh, we're going to be comfortable, and this is the first time for us. And if you got some jeans and some denim, put it on. And we, we're going to show, we're going to prove that we can praise God and glorify God with, with denim on. So uh, next Sunday is going to be Go Western Day. So uh, if you got some jeans and shirt and whatever else it takes, wear it. And we're going to be comfortable and we're going to praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bring your offerings and your tithes and we're going to dismiss. Praise God.
I just want to make a quick announcement about the envelopes. I think several weeks ago, we indicated that at that time, we did not have a pastor. So that some people will actually put in <coughs> monetary amounts in the pastor's square. We did not have a pastor. But yet to be told, we have a pastor now. So if you want to bless our pastor, Sister Elizabeth Ann Douglas, you can put it on here. Anything that you put on this contribution envelope will also be reflected on your contribution statement. Amen? Amen. Uh, that's it. That's it. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, Father, we lift this offering up to you, and we know that you are receiving our offering and our tithes. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you're opening up the windows of heaven and you're pouring out blessings that we will not have room enough to receive. And as the apostle said, whatever's not working in your house, as a result of you sowing seed today, as a result of you paying and giving your tithe and your offering, everything that hadn't been working, it's working. Amen. Praise God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it cannot disobey the Holy Ghost. It cannot disobey the glory of God. It cannot disobey the presence of God. It cannot disobey the word that was spoken today. Amen. Praise God. I receive. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? Praise God. I'd want to get in on this. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Y'all excuse my informality, but I'm not into that. Praise God. I think that's it. You got anything, Miss Ann? No, I don't look like it. But you know, can you, 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 can you get anything out? Yeah, no, no. She can say no. Well, again, y'all dismissed. Praise God. Let's just walk out in the glory. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord.